So this next story is truly heartwarming because it really proves that money can't buy everything. You may be able to buy a lot of things, but you can't buy everything. Specifically, you can't buy loyalty because as many of you know, Mike Bloomberg is poaching the staff members of a lot of other campaigns and he's offering them not just competitive salaries, but a lot of money to work for him. So these other campaigns are having people flee them to work for Bloomberg, not necessarily because these people ideologically agree with Mike Bloomberg, but because the amount of money that he's offering is quite literally life-changing. So you can't really refuse it if you're self-interested, if you want to survive, if you live in a city like New York, you know, and you want to get by. Um, however... <laughs> Not everyone who's working for Bloomberg uh, is fully on board with his agenda. Look at this tweet from Kayla Page. She writes, I just had a Mike Bloomberg canvasser come to my door. I let him know politely I am decidedly voting for Bernie Sanders. And then he just gave me a fist bump and said, oh, me too. Feel the burn, homie. <laughs> I love it so much. And um, I haven't, you know, had the pleasure of speaking with the Bloomberg volunteer or staffer yet. But if I get a text from them, if I get a call or they knock on my door, I'm not going to be rude to them. I'm going to try to convince them to vote for Bernie Sanders. This really is an opportunity because usually when you're canvassing for Bernie Sanders, you have to go to other people's doors. But we may have an opportunity where they just come to our doors and try to get us to vote for Bloomberg initially. But I mean, this tells me that we can convince them to vote for Bernie Sanders. So that's what I'm going to try to do. But this isn't just an isolated incident because this is actually a bigger problem according to this article from GQ, which reads, Bloomberg's paid volunteers are telling voters to support other candidates. As it turns out, you can't buy loyalty. I love that. You can't buy loyalty. You can have a hundred different yachts. You can have a couple of mansions. But you can't buy love and affection. Anyone who's supporting Mike Bloomberg, these mayors across the country, you know, people in the House of Representatives who have endorsed him, they're not endorsing his policies. They're endorsing him because he helped them get elected. It's purely self-interest. So, I mean, Mike Bloomberg, he he's not an individual who stands for anything. He doesn't have a political ideology. He went from being a Republican to an independent, and now he's a Democrat. And I get that, you know, the Bernie's not a Democrat argument doesn't resonate with us, but Bernie has always had a consistent political ideology, whereas Mike Bloomberg has been all over the place, but he's remained solidly on the right. So you're not convincing anyone, and by, you know, hiring a bunch of people to canvas for you, Sure, you can pay them a lot of money and offer them a lot of nice perks like a MacBook Pro, but that doesn't mean that they're going to love you and act in good faith for you because they don't believe in you. Now, as Luke Darby of the article writes, the Los Angeles Times reports the campaign has hired 500 deputy field organizers, paying them $2,500 each to promote Bloomberg on social media to their friends and family. A Bloomberg spokesperson said in a statement that the goal is to meet the voters everywhere on any platform that they consume their news. Based on documents and interviews with some of these organizers, the Times found that many of them are using accounts that are only one or two months old and that some have fewer than 20 followers. One organizer described the training they received, saying the campaign told them the average person has a network of 750 people on their phones. They told us, we want you to reach out to those friends you're comfortable talking to and then also those friends you might not have talked to in a while but might be interested in politics. This is in line with some other unusual approaches that the Bloomberg campaign has taken so far, including funding a massive meme-producing effort and a proposed $150 to social media micro-influencers to make content that tells us why Mike Bloomberg is the electable candidate who can rise above the fray, work across the aisle, so all Americans feel heard and respected, according to the campaign's listing. Despite the $2,500 paycheck, deputy field organizers aren't exactly turning out sizzling content. Per the Times, quote, Rather than create their own content, organizers often use the exact text, images, and links provided to them by the campaign. The result has been a stiff outpouring of tweets, Facebook and Instagram posts, with little to no engagement and sometimes half-hearted text messages. Some organizers were so robotic in their tweeting, Twitter suspended their accounts Friday evening after the Times inquired about whether their behavior complied with the platform's rules on spam and manipulation. 
One organizer in Los Angeles told the Times, when I text my friends, depending on the friend, a lot of people think it's spam or my account was hacked. Once people realize it's actually me who's making these and it's not spam, they kind of just figure I'm being paid for it. At one point, another organizer texted his friends, Sam Donaldson just nailed it. Mike Bloomberg is the president we need to unite our country, using the exact wording suggested by the Bloomberg campaign. He promptly followed up with a text reading, Please disregard, vote for Bernie or Warren. So, I mean, there you have it. Look, if you're not an organizer, if you have no, you know, uh, foundation in true grassroots, this is what happens. You can't get people to make memes for you that they believe in, that they find funny because you paid them to, because they have to believe it. Otherwise, the creativity, that spark's not going to be there. You can't have people reach out to friends that they don't know. I mean, I don't know 750 people. I could, like, reach out to, like, maybe 15 people at most. But, I mean, like, you can't get them to awkwardly talk to people from high school that they haven't spoken to in years to get them to vote for you. I mean, it's just... This isn't the way that organizing works. So you can try to poach people away from other campaigns and pay them a lot. But at the end of the day, if they don't believe in you, when they make that pitch to people, when they knock on doors for you, it's going to fall flat. It's going to fall flat. And really, the only thing that is keeping Mike Bloomberg's campaign alive, aside from a lot of money, is the fact that there are a lot of people who get everything that they know about politics from televisions, right? Not just news, but ads. Their entire viewpoint of the world is shaped by marketing. And really what Mike Bloomberg is doing here is engaging in a nationwide marketing campaign. He's trying to get people to believe that the product that he's selling, which is his campaign, is the best product for them. It's the same way that they market a cheeseburger for you. You've got to get this because it's delicious. It's the same way that they market any drink to you, you know, be it Mountain Dew or beer. It's the same fucking thing. But at the end of the day, you can't buy passion, you can't buy loyalty, as the subheader pointed out. So I absolutely love, it, love this. And let me just say this. Please don't be rude to anyone from Bloomberg's campaign. If they get a hold of you, because they likely will, convince them to vote for Bernie Sanders. We can actually do this. Like, <laughs> And this is, this is kind of us, like, on a wide scale, cucking Mike Bloomberg, because we're getting your volunteers to vote for Bernie Sanders. And it's been relatively successful based on a couple of anecdotes. But I mean, look, as I stated, if you don't have a foundation in the grassroots, you're not going to have a campaign that is going to be successful at reaching disaffected voters. You know, people who watch TV that always vote may opt for Bloomberg. But the reason why Bernie Sanders is so successful is because he has a real ground game. And the people who are canvassing for Bernie and phone banking for him, they believe to their core the message that Bernie Sanders is espousing. With Mike Bloomberg, I don't know what his message is. He's a billionaire. He's an opportunist. He's an authoritarian. He's explicitly racist, possibly fascistic, but I don't know what policies he stands for. He banned big gulps. He surveilled Muslims, right? He got into these wars with teachers in New York City in spite of what he said at the debate. So I don't know what he represents. And if you're a canvasser, it can't be the same thing. The only message that he has politically at this point in time is that he can beat Donald Trump. But now you don't have a leg to stand on because polls show that you actually lose to Donald Trump by three points and Bernie beats Trump by three points. That's according to one poll. But I mean, overall, there's just, there's no there there. So you might be able to, you know, have some type of penetration, politically speaking, in certain states because you have millions upon millions of dollars in television commercials that come on every five seconds. But at the end of the day, you know, if you don't actually offer people something to vote for, then you're going to have a difficult time. Um, so I absolutely love this story. This genuinely was a heartwarming story. And I, I couldn't wait to share it with you all because, you know, it, it really is disgusting and morally reprehensible that we have a billionaire who's literally trying to buy his way into the White House. And the precedent that this would set if he's able to be successful here I don't even want to think about it. We'd have, what, Bob Iger, the Disney CEO, which just stepped down, run in 2024. We'd have Mark Zuckerberg run in 2028, Jeff Bezos run in 2032. I don't want to start that, right? We already have that type of situation with Donald Trump, where he kind of self-funded, but in the general, he took big money because he's not as rich as Bloomberg, but we don't want this to be a thing because once you go down this path, then 
we're just going to take turns having different billionaires run for office. And it's already bad enough that we have billionaires buying off Congress, as you know, Mike Bloomberg admitted to on the debate stage. But we can't allow them to just buy the presidency now. We have to draw a line in the sand. So, you know, it is a little bit encouraging to see that, you know, he, he may be poaching people away from other campaigns and paying them a lot, but they're still not receptive to his message and they're not doing a great job. They're kind of acting as moles in his campaign and uh, sabotaging him internally. And that is a really good thing to see. Beta male.